Right. In uh, 1932, the Neumann formula is quantum mechanics is much much group line in the quantum mechanics. Uh, about three years later, you know, the following to his friend Gary Bertoff, uh, I would like to make a confession which may seem immoral. I do not absolutely believe in Hilbert space no more. Uh, one year later, they produced a paper which is called The Logic of Quantum Mechanics. And they had many followers, and all of them failed. So, uh, so, what's about, so what I'm going to talk about is some new approach. And it's quite different from uh, the previous attempts in the sort of maximization program of quantum mechanics. Like, our basic concepts are systems and processes. And the main connective there is the way you can compose them, one after each other or one while doing the other one. The algebra is of monoidal categories. Right. The algebra is of monoidal categories with some additional structure which represents physical content. Uh, the beauty of the whole thing is that it uh, leads to purely diagrammatic calculus. And the applications lies in the fact that this stuff supports automation and we actually have a software tool which implements all the things which I'm talking about. So the basic data of this theory is a bunch of systems which you give names. Then once you've got these systems, you can think of processes which take a system of one type, of type A to type B. The idea is then that you can consider either no system or composite systems and processes their own, and you can compose processes, and you can do some, one process after the other. Like uh, this is the language of what is called symmetric null category. So this was like a 30 second course in category theory. Uh, so you, you can represent all this stuff graphically and such a process becomes a box with an input and an output. If you see a line, it just basically means like the identity process doing nothing. And doing one process after the other is just putting one here and the other one after it. And this is doing process F while doing process G. So it's fairly intuitive. Uh, some special processes. For example, one where you don't specify the input and just what comes out, you would refer usually to this as a preparation. Then this is what typically people call an effect. You've got an input and no output. And if you compose this two, you get something diamond shaped. And we call this a value. Now you know this stuff already because everybody knows this. And then if you sort of close it down and rotate it a bit, you get this. If you get this, you close it down, you rotate it a bit, you get this. And if you get this, you close it down, you rotate it a bit, you get this. So basically, this is quantitative theory. So, uh, so basically, what you need is you need the ability to throw, turn a uh, triangle upside down. So we're going to assume in our calculus that whenever you've got a box, you can put it upside down. And this turns it, then you've got a notion of inner product, and from that you derive probabilities. Now, to, the idea, this is a very general theory which applies to a lot of stuff. So now we're going to sort of approximate quantum mechanics, see what sort of structures we have to add. So the first thing I add, is a very, kind, very special kind of process, no input, two outputs. And it satisfies these, these weird equations. So you see, this little bit here is sticking here. Here you see the same bit upside down. This is doing nothing, doing nothing, and the result of all that is doing nothing. What can we prove with this? Well, we can prove the following. Suppose you've got a certain process here, which I depict like that. I rotate it 180 degrees, and I define it sort of by showing the internal structure is the thing I start from together with one of these, one of these. Now, I can just add the following two bits to it, one here and one there. And now I'm going to use my axiom to show the following result. If I take this little bit and I use my axiom, it becomes just a straight line, and I get this. If I take this little bit, it becomes just a straight line, I get this, then I take the whole thing together with my definition, this definition of this here. And then you see the result of all of this is that I've got a box here, and I can sort of slide over these wires. So then I go here, and it comes out there. So I just proved some sort of sliding result that I can take these boxes and slide them over these wires. What can you do with this? Well, this is a consequence of this, because I here I just take this, I slide it to the other side, and then I yank this piece of wire, which was just what my accent told me what I could do. Now well, I assume that this guy and this guy together make up the identity, which is something composed with its edge joint makes the identity. Usually we call this unitarity. That's what unitarity is. So we throw that away. We introduce Alice and Bob. And this is quantum teleportation. So you've got Alice. <laughs> she has an incoming qubit. Bob and Alice chair an entangled pair. Alice does a measurement here, which is not deterministic, so it depends on a variable. Bob does a corresponding correction. 
and the overall process is the flow of information from Alice to Bob. So that's how it goes. Now, obviously, everybody here who knows a bit quantum information, they are aware that to be compatible with relativity, you need the flow of classical data from here to there, so that Alice can tell Bob basically what happened here. So the next part in our uh, build-up is to specify what this classical data is. And this also slightly quantum information uh, inspired. The idea of classicality or an observable goes down to the idea that classical data can be deleted while quant and copied while quant uh, quantum data can't. So classicality for us is witnessed by a special process which copies the input and a process which deletes it. And now there's a bit of math I have to go through. It turns out to be that a good choice for that is like a commutative special dagger for Benius algebra because we have the following theorem that in the case of Hilbert spaces, this bunch of crazy pictures is exactly the same thing as an order normal days. It's an old theorem to prove. But, uh, so, my time is, of course, going very quick. So, one of the nice things, so, now, now, the sort of bad behind this is quite substantial. So, this weird set of rules turns out to be exactly the same as the existence of a bunch of what we call spiders processes with n inputs and n outputs, which are such that two, if two spiders meet, they sort of join. So, so this is for us what an observable is. Uh, funnily enough, we, in, in quantum mechanics, we have also different kind of observables which are active at the same time, like position and momentum. So we have different colors of spiders. Here we've got a green spider, there we've got a red spider. So black spiders, if they meet, they fuse. We just saw that. What happens if a green spider meets a red spider? Meets a red spider? Well, they don't like each other. They sort of completely disconnect. And now, funnily enough, this sounds all very silly. You can actually compute things with this. So here are the two main pieces. They are the so-called C not gates. And I'm going to compute them using my green and my red spiders. So one can actually verify that if the green spider corresponds to the Z basis, and if the red spider corresponds to the X basis, that this thing exactly corresponds to this matrix. So we compose two of these guys. You got one here, you got one there. Uh, first, we fuse the green and the red together, because the spiders are fused together. Now we see that the green spider meets the red spider, so they disconnect. We get the identity, because we know that the composite of two C not gates is the identity. Uh, well, there's a bunch of other stuff you can do. You can introduce phases for the spiders. This just all, of, all follows from the same algebraic structure of Frobenius algebra. In the next talk, we hear somebody talking about measurement-based quantum computing. So this is the measurement-based quantum computing setup. You've got a bunch of input qubits. You've got a bunch of gates, which you apply to them. You've got measurements across a certain angle. And this is the calculation of what this boils down to. One, two, three, finish. This is an arbitrary qubit unitary. Thank you. <laughs>